fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode the trail near Silverton. They reached a plateau and stopped to look out over the far-reaching prairie. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. Oh, Oh, fella. Oh. Oh, Look, Kimasabi. Big wagon train come across prairie. It is a big one, Toto. Must be about 15 or 20 wagons in all. Isn't that right? They're going on toward the Pecos Valley. They may run into trouble. The Apaches have been making raids throughout the valley during the past two weeks. Isn't that right? I've decided we'll follow along with that wagon train, just in case. We'll scout ahead of them to make sure they aren't heading for trouble. That good idea. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. All that day, the snake-like wagon train, with its billowing canvases and straining horses, moved slowly across the prairie. At dusk, the wagons were drawn into a big circle, and things were made ready for the night. After supper, the pioneers gathered around a big campfire to relax a bit after the tedious day that had passed. Jet Rector, master of the train, strode into the glow of the fire, and standing on a box, raised his hands to quiet the group. Uh, quiet down, everybody. I got something to say to you. We came a mighty long way. Our journey's almost ended. We're not out of danger by a long shot. So far, we've been mighty lucky. Now, uh, our trail scout tells me we got about three days' journey before we reach the Pecos River. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know three days don't seem much of anything after all the time we've taken to get this far. I want to warn you. A lot can happen in those three days. So don't be getting too confident that all our troubles are behind us. I've been noticing that some of you are getting a bit lax about standing guard at night and things like that. Now listen, Jed. Seems to me you keep the folks worried when there isn't any cause. Me and my partner joined this train and we've taken your orders. Up to now. 
But after almost reaching the end of our journey, you're going too far and trying to scare the daylights out of everybody whenever you get the chance. Yes, sir. Yes, Ned Hooker. Why is it every time my Jed tries to do what he's supposed to do, you have to butt in with your two cents? You and that lazy partner of yours, Rusty Drake, got this far with the whole skin because of the way Jed led the wagon train. That's telling them, Mag. Yeah, them two get all a lots of work. Hooker, frankly, we didn't want you and Drake to join up with this outfit. But we finally let you. Every time there's hard work to be done, neither one of you are around. I noticed that this evening when we made camp. The fact is, I'd like to know just where both of you went to. That's none of your business, but I don't mind telling you, Jed. Rusty and I rode ahead to look over the trail we're taking in the morning. We have a couple of hard scouts to do that. And in spite of your ornery way of acting, I feel a might responsible for getting you both through safe. Now, if you happen to run into an Indian party and get scalped, it'd be your own fault if you leave the train. That's our lookout. We can take care of ourselves. That's right. Sid and me are old enough to know what we're doing. You shut up, Rusty Drake. Nobody asked you to come around here yapping. As far as I can see, I don't know why Jed don't tell you to go ahead on your own. Neither one of you brought a wagon along, and you haven't done any garden like you should have either. By thunder, we've been taking orders from Jed, but we don't have to take that bellowing from you, Mag. If Rusty is willing, I'm ready right now to leave the train and go on our own. That suits me, Sid. Come on, let's get our horses and leave. Sure. Let the others listen to Jed and Mag do their plowing, but we don't have to. That's right. Let's go. Well, I say good riddance, Jed. Those two are troublemakers, and we're better off without them. Yes, we be right, man. All right, folks. Forget the little happening and get back to enjoying yourselves. But uh, be sure you don't let down your guard till we reach where we're heading. Eh? All right, Jed. <laughs> Sid and Rusty left the wagon train and rode along the trail ahead at a leisurely pace. The moon was shining brightly, and they talked as they rode. <laughs> well, we finally got a good excuse for breaking loose from that wagon train. Yeah. I was beginning to wonder how we were going to do it without causing suspicion. A lot of cash in that train. Practically all of them brought along all the savings. Right. I know Jed and Meg have plenty. Sold out a big store in St. Louis before they left. You think Muggs Delroy got that letter you sent him in Pegasus? There's no reason why he shouldn't have. After he lit out from St. Louis because of the law, he wrote me from Pecos. He said if we came out that way, we might pull some jobs together. Ah. What did you tell him in your letter? I told him we were planning to come out with Jet's wagon train. There was lots of cash in it. That we'd leave the train on some excuse and make time for Pecos to meet him. Then we could plan something against the train and carry it through before it reached the Pecos River. Ah. In that case, let's make better time than this. Let's get moving. Come on, get it up. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had camped that night a few miles ahead of the wagon train in a sheltered grove. They had rolled into their blankets to sleep when they heard fast hoofbeats on the trail that passed nearby. The Lone Ranger sat up and listened. Oh, you awake? Ah. Me hear hoofbeats on trail. They're coming from the direction of the wagon train. I'll stand up. Maybe I can see them through the trees as they pass. Ah, moon, plenty bright. Come on, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Two riders came up. Yes. I heard one call the other Sid. Wonder what's their hurry. Me not know. Let's saddle the horses and ride back toward the wagon train camp. I want to make sure things are all right there. Uh, that's a good idea. We get horses now. When the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the trail and started back toward the wagon train, Toto pointed and spoke. Trail, two galloping horses. Easy to see, Kimasabi. We'll backtrack on them and find out definitely if they did come from the wagon train. They did. I'm curious to know why they left during the night. Them riding too hard for train scouts. That's right. The scouts would be more cautious. All right, let's hurry. Come on, Come on, scout. At 
At the wagon train camp, Jed Rector was on guard with one of the scouts. Suddenly, the scout pointed to the top of a rise in the rolling prairie and spoke. Hey, look, Jed. You across the prairie on top of that rise. A couple of horsemen, looks like. Gee, the moon is bright enough to see one of them's a redskin. That's right. Can't make the other one out very clear. But you can see that white horse plain enough. Gee, you think maybe they're Indian scouts? I don't know. But as soon as they leave, Hank and me will trail them and see where they go. Gee, they've turned and gone out of sight. Good. I'll get Hank, we'll get our horses and go over there and pick up the tracks. After the Lone Ranger and Toto left the rise and started back to their camp, the two wagon train scouts picked up their trail and followed. We'd better keep close watch, Hank, so we don't ride into an ambush. Yeah, I'm watching. So far, I haven't seen any sign that says a lot of Indians are around. Neither have I. But I don't like the idea of them two spying on us. That's right. I'd say they were up to something. Hey, wait a minute. Their trail turns off here. Let's stop. Oh, 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 oh. The tracks head for that grove back over there. Yeah. Let's sneak over there on foot. Stay there. <coughs> Come on. Have your gun handy. We'll find out what they're up to. In their camp, the Lone Ranger had just finished taking the gear off Scout and Silver. As they prepared to spread their sleeping blankets on the ground, the great horse Silver whinnied and pawed the dirt. Keep us up here. Silver, get warm. Yes. We'll walk over to those low boulders, Toto, then get down quickly. Come on. Just as the masked man and the Indian reached the low boulders, the Lone Ranger noticed a slight movement near one of the big trees a short distance away. He spoke sharply. Down, Tonto, quick. Uh We'll throw some lead their way. After an exchange of shots, there was silence. Then Tonto peered over the edge of the boulder. We think we see two dark figures running back through trees, Kimasabi. All right, we'll follow them. Come on. Uh As the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the grove, they saw the two men mounting hurriedly. We shoot? No, let them go. And heading back to wagon train. They may have seen us there and followed us. Let's get back to camp and get some rest. When Hank and the other wagon scout returned to the wagon train camp... They told Jed about what they had seen. Yes, sir, Jed. It was light enough to see that one was an Indian and the other was an out hoot wearing a mask. That's right. Somehow they got wise and got behind some boulders before we get a shot at them. Yeah. Then they started throwing hot lead at us. Yeah, and those bullets were chipping the bark off in the tree right at my elbow. It wasn't safe for us to stay and fight them, so we hightailed it back here. Well, what do you think about it? You think we ought to take some men and get back there after them? Oh, no, he was doing that, Jed. Them two are on guard now. The only thing we can do is for always to be more careful in watching for trouble. Yep, and you can take my word for it. If trouble comes, it'll be that masked man and Indian who brings it. The first time we come to, we'll get the sheriff and have him get a posse and search for them, too, until he finds them. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue. The following morning, the big wagon train continued on its way westward. 
Meantime, in Pecos, after riding hard all night, Sid and Rusty found their friend Muggs Delroy, and the three of them sat talking in the cafe. <laughs> ah, we're sure glad to see you, Muggs. Almost ran our horses ragged to get here. In your letter, you said you were coming out with a big wagon train. Where are the others? The wagon train is quite a way back yet. And the plane's the other side to pay you. Yeah, we found out there's a lot of cash in that train, Muggs. Me and Sid didn't get along with the others too well. We finally made an excuse to get away from it. I get it. You got some idea about taking that cash, huh? That's right. I thought if you could get a few hombres together who'd be interested, we might be able to... <laughs> I can do better than that. The Apaches have been raising a ruckus around here lately. But finally, the troopers from Fort Stockton ran them back to the reservation. That is all but a small number of renegades under Lightfeather. Who's Lightfeather? A renegade redskin that got thrown out of his tribe. He got a band together, and they've been hiding out in the hills since the troopers got busy. How do they fit in? Like this. Now, Lightfeather is a friend of mine, see? I could get him to bring his braves and we'd raid that wagon train. We could lay in wait near the bank of the Pecos River and trap them in. Why would those redskins help with the job? What did they want for help? Hey, look, we take the cash boxes and any valuables we find in the wagons. They get the horses after the people are done for. Mm, sounds like a good deal, Rusty. Yeah. How soon can you get in touch with Light Feather? Within an hour or so. <laughs> yeah, come on. We get our horses and ride to this hideout camp right now. Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. <laughs> We can get to those Indians today. We can get them to the riverbank in time. Let's go. Muggs led the way to Lightfeather's hidden camp and arranged for the ambush of the wagon train with the renegade chief. Meanwhile, the day passed uneventfully for the pioneers and the wagon train. And that night, as they sat around the campfire, Jed and Mag were conferring with the two wagon train scouts. So you think we'll be able to reach the river before noon tomorrow, eh? Sure will, Jed. Ain't very far from here. I'm sure glad to hear that. We can start the river crossing early in that case. Sure, and from then on, things will be clear sailing. Fort Stockton isn't far beyond the river, and those troopers keep the Redskins quiet. You know, I'm glad them two ornery critters, Sid Hooker and Rusty Drake, up and left the train. They sort of made me nervous the whole time they were with us. Well, Meg, frankly, I kept a pretty close watch on them myself. I didn't trust them any further than I could toss a steer. Yeah, well, I reckon they're out of our hair all around. What worries me are that mask I'm bringing that Indian we saw spying on us that night. Well, that's right. And Hank and me haven't been able to catch sight of them since then. Well, maybe it was a couple of outlaws who saw we were too big for them to tackle and went on their way. Well, let's hope so. <clears throat> well, I'm turning in for a spell. I'll wake you up when it's your turn to stand watching. I reckon those who aren't going to stand watch better turn in now so as to be fit for that river crossing tomorrow. <laughs> you know, man alive, I'll sure be glad when we get across and have nothing more to worry about. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had kept careful watch but hadn't seen anything out of the way. They made sure that no one would surprise them a second time by being extra careful in the selection of a campsite. At dawn the following morning, the Lone Ranger spoke as they prepared to break camp. Otto, the wagon train should reach the river a little before noon. That's right. Once across, they'll be safe from attack. Ah. Indians are afraid of troopers from fort. We ride to the river and wait there in hiding to watch the wagons cross. They may run into difficulties. Ah. All right, let's get started. Easy, 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 big fellow. Easy, easy. As they approached the place where the trail went between the two sloping hills to reach the river, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the trail and circled to the other side of one of the hills. Then they rode to the crest and halted. Tonto, look down on the slopes facing the trail. Ah. Indians waiting in ambush. The wagon train will be trapped if it goes between those hills. Not right. I'll go warn them. If you go up the river and cross without being spotted, you can get troopers from Fort Stockton here within the hour. Ah, uh, me do that. Me get troopers and then get here soon. Adios. Adios, Tonto, and hurry. Ah, uh, get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. The Lone Ranger made his way cautiously down the opposite side of the hill. Then, when he was sure he couldn't be seen, headed along the trail toward the wagon train. 
Now let's go. Come on, Silver. It was a short time later when Jed, riding alongside the lead wagon, which Mag was driving, called attention to a rider coming at a fast pace toward them. Hey, Mag, look yonder. Coming towards us on the trail. It's great day. I can't make out much for the dust, but he's sure coming looking his split. Here, what, what? Hey, what who's that coming yonder? We was just wondering the same thing, Hank. Hey? Uh, thunder, I'm beginning to make him out now. Looks like a mask, hombre, and a big white horse. Say, you're right. But that's a mask, Humphrey. We chased the other night. Have your gun ready, Jed. Well, step the wagons till he gets here. We can handle things better that way. Hold on! Stop the wagons! Stop the wagons! Oh, 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 you make one move... You don't need that gun. I came to tell you Indians are waiting in ambush. There may be times you swing around and... Shut up, mister. This isn't the first time we've seen you. You came spying on us with a redskin. Now you try to get us to turn so you can trap us, maybe. Don't listen to anything he has to say, Jed. You'd better listen. Indians are waiting in ambush at the river on both slopes of the hills there. Hey, listen, you. I'm one of the scouts for this here wagon train. We rode the river a while ago and we found everything all right. I say you're lying for some reason. I'll overlook the fact you call me a liar, mister. This is more important. I say Indians are waiting to raid this wagon train. Take that for what it's worth. Well, we we believe what a scotch tell us, mister. Not what some mask hombre who spends nights spying on us is. Hank will take his guns and take off his mask. And then we'll take him to the law. Don't try it if you want to live. Don't let him talk to you like that, Jed. Are you a man or a mouse? And you with a drawn gun on him. I'll get his guns right now. Keep him covered, Hank. You too, Meg. As Jed holstered his own gun and urged his horse forward toward the Lone Ranger, the masked man signaled the intelligent Silver with his knee. Immediately, Silver snorted. And reared to his hind legs. The other horses, frightened, jumped and bucked. The great silver whirled and sprang away down the trail at such a fast gallop that when the others regained their balance, the masked man and the great white stallion were out of gunshot. Holy mackerel, did you see that? See what? By thunder, he moved so fast, him and that stallion, nobody could see anything. Great day, that was the fastest moving hombre and horse I ever did see. I'd sure like to know what he was up to. Well, whatever it was, he didn't get away with it. As long as you say the way is clear, we're moving toward the river. All right, get moving, everybody. Get those wagons moving. Get up. Get up. Get up. An hour later, the wagon train entered the small valley between the two slopes where the trail approached the river. Whoa, 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 whoa there. Whoa, whoa now. As the lead wagon stopped at the river, there was a stillness in the air for a few moments. Well, just as Hank said, Meg. Everything's as quiet as can be. Yep. Now all we have to do is... Holy what... smoke, Indians! The next man was right. Jed. Oh, Jed, look at him coming down both sides. Yeah. Oh, 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 he's just telling me, fella. It's him again. I came to help. Jed, I suggest you get everybody into the wagons. The men can shoot under the canvas. Hurry. Good idea. Into the wagons, everybody. Get into the wagons. <laughs> Following the Lone Ranger's suggestion, the men quickly got into the wagons and, crouching down, shoved their rifles and guns under the edge of the canvas to shoot at the Indians. The Lone Ranger, taking advantage of each lull in the battle and creeping along under the big schooners, managed to make his way from one wagon to another, giving help and advice and watching for flaming arrows. Finally, he returned to Jed's lead wagon and was fighting beside Jed, Mag, and Hank. I guess that one. By thunder, I made that one bite the dust. Darn it, there are plenty more to take his place. Must be 40 or 50 out there. Oh, wait, look up the side of the slope. I see two white men. Holy smoke. That's Sid Hooker and Rusty Drake. They used to be with us, but they pulled out a couple of nights ago. They must be responsible for this raid. Well, I agree with you. Say, we'll never make it. We're running out of bullets. We have to hang on. We're going to get down, but we'll go fighting. Oh, gosh, this is terrible. If we could only think of some way. What was that? The troopers. 
My Indian friend went for them. Great day, and to think we didn't trust you. Look, the Indians are leaving. For a short time, the Indians fought back as they tried to retreat. But gradually, the troopers encircled them, closing in gradually until they gave up entirely. The battle was over. <laughs> Oh, out here just in time. Uh, troopers catch white men with Indians. Take white men to fort. Take Indians to reservation. Well, the train will be safe from now on. Hey, right, Carly. I reckon we owe our lives to you, mister. The only way the West will survive and grow is by each one helping the other, Hank. We'll be nearby if you need help crossing. From now on, you won't have Indian trouble. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, fill now, look at that. There they go riding away like nothing had ever happened. Instead of staying here, so those people could thank them for what they did. Hey, Jed, Max, where's that masked man? He's gone. Yep, gone without waiting for thanks either. Well, by thunder, it finally came to me. I should have remembered before, what but I... What came to you, you nitwit? Why, what do you think? That the masked man is an hombre I should have known. He's the Lone Ranger. I still This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.